I'm Dre Gottams, and today I wanted to show a deck profile on a Pokemon that I've been having a lot of fun with. Um, I am a grass aficionado when it comes to the Pokemon TCG world, and Shining Genesect is a great, great Pokemon to uh, sink your teeth into. Um, I guess we'll just get straight into it and show you what he can do. Um, the, the deck focuses around this attacker right here. He's a basic attacker which is good so we're not giving up two prizes. 130 HP, very solid, and he has the Gaia Blaster attack. We've seen this before on things like Keldeo uh, and other mons where it's 50 damage plus 20 more for all the energy, basic energies that's attached to it. So this attack does 20 more damage times the amount of grass energies since he is a grass Pokemon. Um, we have his ability which kind of helps facilitate this. Once during your turn, you may move one Grass Energy from one of your Pokemon to this Pokemon, so you can have an Energy on the bench, move it to Shining Genesect, uh, which can kind of help you get this three Energy cost quicker. Uh, but another thing that we're going to be doing, and the main kind of focus of it, is getting out this Venusaur. Now, the Venusaur Jungle Totem ability says that each basic Grass Energy attached to your Pokemon provides two Grass Energy. So we'll basically double the account of energies um, if we have Venusaur out and his ability active, which is awesome for Shining Genesect because that means if we have three on here, it, it'll count as having six and then we're really hitting very high numbers very quickly and we're doing so with just a basic non-GX attacker. So that's going to be the strategy. Um, we're going to have for the Shining Genesect, we're running a 2-1-2 line of the Venusaur just because we don't want things to get too clunky. Uh, we're going to try to keep things slim and just get one Venusaur. His ability doesn't stack. So we only have one Jungle Totem ability active at one time. So you really only need to have one up there. Um, so that's why we're only running a 2-1-2 line of that. We are running a 1-1 line of Lurantis GX. Um, this just gives us access to a GX attack. Uh, you always want to have a GX attack available in your deck if at all possible. And his um, attacks are pretty decent considering uh, Venusaur's uh, ability. So you never know if you put three energy on Lurantis, his Chlorocyte is going to be doing 300 damage. Not too shabby at all. Then uh, for our support, we have the one Oranguru, and then we're running three Tapu Lele, a little heavy on the Tapu Lele, because we want to ensure that we get Bridget's and Skyla's early game to try to get our Venusaur set up. So that's uh, it for the Mons. Um, for the items, we have two Field Blower. Uh, you know, Garbotoxin really shuts down our ability to kind of like ramp up those high numbers. So we want to be able to knock off Floatstones whenever possible. We have four Max Elixir just to speed up the deck. Uh, three Rare Candy. Uh, we're going to be using those to go into Venusaur. We don't want to take three turns to evolve into a Stage 2. So Rare Candy is going to help us speed up that process. We have one res Rescue Stretcher, one Super Rod since we run uh, 12 basic energy, so Super Rod is going to be helpful there. We run two Switches. Uh, the Switch is good because um, we could possibly start the game with Bulbasaur or Oranguru, which will slow us down. We don't want that. We can also use Switch when, say we're attacking with Shining Genesect, he takes a hit but doesn't die, then maybe we'll switch into the other Shining Genesect. Energy Reload to bring that energy to the new one, and then continue to pound face. And Switch is good for uh, doing that. So that's why we're running two. We have four Ultra Ball. We are running uh, one Bridget for the starting setup uh, consistency. We have two Guzma. Uh, we would like to run three, but just the spacing is pretty tight right now. We have four N and four Sycamore just for that good old draw. And one Skyla. Skyla is really important for getting out that rare candy play. We have three Choice Man. Uh, we're going to go the damage route as opposed to like the energy keeping route. So our Choice Man is our tool of choice. One Float Stone um, just for extra retreat and 12 basic energy. So yeah, that's uh, the deck's pretty straightforward, um, but it hurts when it hits. Hits like a truck and only on a basic non-GX, so that's... 
the idea with the deck. Unfortunately, it does look like we're going up against fire, so that's going to be problematic. But we're going to see if we can um, outspeed them in the damage department. Maybe we could overwhelm them. That's going to be the plan. Now, ready to go. Cool. So, starting off with three Sycamore in hand, which is ouch. Um, but we're probably going to have to use it because we need to get our um, Bulbasaur on deck as fast as possible. If we get an end, that wouldn't be bad. Uh, and losing our candy also hurts. Uh, that is painful, but we had to do it. And we did not even get Bulbasaur down. Which is rough. But we're going to do what we have to do. Fight ever onward and uh, to see what we can achieve here. Now hitting this max elixir would be big. We're going to go ahead and play the Bridget first to thin out the deck. So we'll get one Bulbasaur, one Oranguru, and one Shining Genesect. Hopefully we can hit this max elixir because so, then we can start attacking. And we did. So max elixir, we can go to Shining Genesect. It doesn't really matter because we're going to use his ability to energy reload. Get the energy. We're going to attach energy here and might as well go ahead and use this choice band for more damage to put further pressure. Turn 1, or turn 2, I'm sorry, we're doing 140 and we don't even have a Venusaur out. We'll see what our opponent gets. So he gets the Max Potion. Uh, max Potion, Volcanion, interesting. Knocks the energy off of him though, so we're okay with that. And we're two-shotting anyway, so this is not really a big, a big deal. We're doing 140. Um, let's see here. I know. I think we're going to go ahead and just keep putting the pressure on. So let's go ahead and knock that off. And let's Sycamore. We, we win if we can draw um, Ultra Ball and a Rare Candy. So let's go for game. Sycamore here, put some pressure, there's an Ultra Ball, and there is the Rare Candy. So we kind of show this in action. So long as there's a Venusaur in deck, which there is. And that was really quick. I know it's just that kind of cheat, but I'll take any win against Fire that I can get, so we'll take that quick win. And I mean, you know, the deck is meant to hit hard and hit quickly, so that's exactly what we should expect. Let's go ahead and get in another game because that was uh, really short. But you can kind of see the power and the speed at which Shining Genesect can enact the grass, the thorns, the bugs. Watch out for grass people. Let's see if we're going against Fire again. And of course we are. It's a grass deck profile video. So let's go up against a couple fire decks. Why not? We do win the coin flip though, so at least Pokemon is being favorable to us in that respect. Um, no basic Monster Force, so we are going to be taking the Monster and a Scoop! Okay. I mean, normally when I'm playing a Fire deck and I'm going up against Grass, I tend to Scoop as well. Uh, that's strange. So, alright, let's try again. Let's see if this is not a fire deck. Let's see if we can get one game that's not fire. I think Pokemon TCGO is specifically syncing us up with fire decks just to troll us. But, you know, we're taking them down one at a time. And it is a little later at night, so maybe, uh, maybe this is when the fire people come out to play. So we see there. The first game, I guess, was a decent tell of how it's supposed to run. The second one, he just quit. See fire again? Okay, no, thank goodness. All right, so at least it's something different. It looks like it's probably a meta-type deck as well, so it would be good to see how that performs. We are going second, unfortunately. But uh, we'll see what we can do here. This is actually a pretty good hand for us. Go on, Guru. And we'll stop with that. We'll be curious. Okay, so we're going against. Ooh. So this is going to be tough. Going, going against Metagross, because Metagross will be able to one shot us, and we likely won't be able to one shot them. 250 is going to be a tall order. Um, but I guess the plan will be to try to um, go after. Oh, and another win! Okay. 
I mean, I could. That's. We technically have three wins in a row. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I wonder what he was searching for. Maybe I guess Lele. He didn't get it. I guess we'll go for another game. This is wild, but I'm afraid it's gonna be another fire there. Okay, good. Not fire. All right. Let's see if we can get an, an actual game here. Um. But luckily, that was fortunate for us because I was not fancying going up against Metagross. 250 is really hard for us. Also, okay, again, looking like another good starting hand. That's good. I mean, that is why you want to run for Shining Genesect. And uh, we have a Fomantis on the bench, so we have a target to at least try to hit this Max Elixir on. And, uh,. Might give up that switch to try to get in a Lele Bridget play. Okay, so Espeon and as we see Espeon so far. Let's go. Max Elixir and we miss. Sad times for us. Ugh. I think we'll go ahead and ditch the switch and the Skyla. Let's see, we have Ivysaur and two Venusaur. Good, we have the Lorantis. We have all those. We have three, and we'll see if we have the Bridget. Cool. So yeah, we'll go ahead and start with this. It didn't get an energy drop though. We can try with the uh, Oranguru if we have one. Forgot to look. Would be really nice to get one energy drop this turn. So yeah, Oranguru, Shiny Genesect. And should we go another shiny? No. Oh, actually, oh wow, we don't have any Bulbasaurs. Rip us. <laughs> so this might be a L for us. Uh, we'll see how this goes. At least we got that. Can we hit this one? Thank you. So at least we hit one Max Elixir. <laughs> No, both Bulbasaur prized. How do you like them apples? Um, but we still might be able to put a little pressure on this Espeon. And we have one card in hand, so I doubt our opponent's gonna do anything to disrupt this. So we should be able to end next turn for a full hand. Uh, we'll probably see a Bridget on their end. I'm not quite sure what they're playing yet. That is very bizarre, I'm not gonna lie. Unless they're gonna Bridget this turn and then end next turn. So we see Miraculous Shine and an N. Huh. Go figure. I, I mean, maybe their hand was just so bad, like they didn't want to waste anything. But we see a Miraculous Shine attachment, which he can't use yet. But I guess that would be good if he ass assumes we're going to be going into like a Lorantis or... Okay, this is actually a little scary now. We do have to keep in mind of our items now. It's already four down. We are four downs. So we're going to attach there. We're going to use this energy reload. And we're not going to play any more items. <laughs> Seeing that they could have a trash of lands, so we want to make sure um, we stay out of that range. Right now, I think we're at 80. Um, consider 100 if they go ahead and field blower and then do a trash land attack. So let's make sure we don't get into 140 range on them. And we should be looking good. We have Ultra Ball coming out. Choice Band going down. Guzma gone, so that's good. Now Tillery up. Tillery is going to give our opponent a lot of flexibility. And we see a Rainbow Energy going down. We see uh, already getting, like, once again, we got 140 on turn two, and we didn't have a uh, Venusaur up turn two. So we are still putting on a lot of pressure, even though we aren't kind of hitting the exact numbers that we want. Um, but I think we're going good. And we see the Fury Bell go on the Orange Guru, probably just to thin out the hand so he can Octillery for a few more cards. Once again, that's fine. Uh, we aren't worried about this Espeon, but we can maybe expect a retreat. Not sure whom you want to retreat. Okay, so that's actually a pretty good play. He's at 160. Um, mm, do we want to kill this Orange Guru right now, or do we not? care too much about that that is the question I think we're fine we're we're not in like one hit range 
so I don't think there's any need to like pressure too much. The way his board setup is, I think he only really starts to gain like control if we get in one shot range um, of these Garbodors. So until then, we're not going to play anything. I'm just going to keep on Gaia blasting. Putting a lot of pressure on, on our opponent. There's a Bulbasaur. There he is. Hey, little fella. Oh, he's just taking a little gander at himself in the stream. Likes the way he looks in the stream. All right. I mean, your opponent may want to start. I don't know what he can do. Acid spray? I really don't know what his play is going to be. I guess he could just take some two shots and hope that I don't get energies enough on another Genesect. Uh, because of that, I think we are going to... Oh, okay. This section makes things a bit more difficult. So I guess this is just a standard Garbodor Espeon deck, so I guess it's actually a normal deck. He just was slow about how he was getting to it. Um, that's kind of scary, though. Uh, I'm not going to lie, the Espeon will be scary because we do put a lot of energies on our guys, so this like, he'll be able to one-shot this. So uh, we are going to be careful about that. I'm going to take a hit here. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a problem. And 80 damage on that. Now, I think we could... Uh, Sycamore doesn't really get us anywhere right now, so I think we're just going to take this kill. Oh no! I forgot, he's... the choice band doesn't hit him. <laughs> uh, alright. Well, I feel sheepish. Okay, that's fine. New plan of attack is we're going to try to hopefully evolve into the Lorantis GX and to finish off the Garbodor. Let me see, okay. So that's okay, that's okay. Not ideal, but not great either. So, energy. Energy down. Let's go for an N so we don't waste too much and hope for the best. Let's get a... Okay, Ultra Ball. <sighs> don't want to lose these energies. But we can get them back though, so that's fine. Let's go into a Foment into the Lorantis. Go there. Use this Oranguru. Would be amazing to hit this Bulbasaur. Amazing to hit the Bulbasaur. Wasn't to be. Let's go Flower Supply. Let's go ahead and attach the Genesect. We're just going to go full in on this Genesect. Could have split it, but I have a feeling he's going to confuse this GX, so I want to try to um, get a way to like really, really kind of put the maps on them. Let's see what comes up first. So we have Trash Lance coming out. Probably could be setting up for uh, Guzma though. See if that's the case. And if they do uh, come up with an Espeon and knock out this Genesect, I mean, that's fine. Um, we're just going to then put up our Lorantis again and we keep cycling energy. If he's taking one prize, per kill, that's fine. But we see a Gladian. It's interesting. And so we will get the Espeon out. Let's see how many energy. We still have more. So we can uh, load up this Lorantis a bit more as well. So we'll see if he goes for the Confusion or for the 90 damage. And this is a kill right here. Something to keep in mind. And then we would just need one more kill. So we could Guzma and then do a hard retreat to energy to get that kill. That's and then stacking up the other Genesect, giving us a better balance. It does go for Psychic. Which is fine. I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, yeah, we can go ahead and Max Elixir here. We hit that. Let's see here. 
Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and... Damn, do we want to... Yeah, we can attach there for now. Let's see, how much energy is We got five, so that's 100 plus 150. We can get that kill, and then he would kill us, and then all we would need is one energy to kill that, but that's not looking too great. So we're going to go ahead, Guzma, keep the strategy going. Shiny Genesec, go ahead. Hard Retreat to Lurantis. Use this one to energy reload to balance out energy. Doesn't really matter because we're going to Flower Supply anyways, so. And let's take two energy there. And another energy here. All this would be going so much better if we had our Venusaur. We'll see if we can make this happen in, in the next turn or two. Um, if, if our opponent brings out the Espeon again, they will need a choice band to get this kill. Uh, hopefully there's no N, so, but uh, looking like they might. They have two Ns played already. Or they could be going for a Guzma. Okay. We're actually okay with that. Anything that prolongs us getting this Venusaur up means a win for us. And now we s cry. <laughs> uh, now we cry. So we're going to need a lot of help. We're going to need to draw into our Field Blower or some more Choice Bands to hopefully uh, get the victory here. Making it interesting. If only we could have had Venusaur up earlier. Such, such, such sad times. Uh, I mean, we could. That's not going to give us a kill. Uh, let's go ahead. Hmm. That won't even help us out either. I think we have to just go all in. Not. Hmm. We could. Go two energy here and do the Chlorocyte for 100 damage, and then hope that we're able to draw into a final energy. Um, that doesn't sound horrible to us. How many Guzmas have they played? They've played two Guzma um, with no abilities right now, so we'd have to have a Guzma in hand. I think we're going to try to survive another attack. Go there. We're just going to go all out on <laughs> this Shining Genesect. It's a Shining Genesect deck profile. Let's go all out and just hope that they don't have the Guzma. If they do, well, at least we had three people quit in a row. Uh, so we can be happy about that. So we see. Uh, okay, drop will come out. Double colorless go down. They might want to retreat. Okay, Sycamore. Expect our opponent to retreat and play the big wheel GX. I think that would be the strategy I would expect from them. If not, then I think we're going to Guzma um, and kill this Garbodor so we can get our abilities back and just see from there. Hopefully, try to get another Shining Genesect out. So if we have our yeah. We still have our. Um, Stretcher and Super Rod. Floatstone. That's good. So it's one Floatstone that they aren't going to use on the Garbodor. So if he's going to... But if he big wheels... Let's see, what are we at right now? We're at 5. We're at 150. I think we're 10 damage short. Fortunately, we are 10 damage short of game. So there is, in fact, the big wheel GX. Now, strategy time. Let's go ahead and get this Venusaur out. I mean, Guzma doesn't really get us anywhere because it's night game, and then he's just going to retreat again. We don't have a follow-up Guzma. He's likely going to be able to GX attack us, but okay. Here's what we can do. 
uh, all those cards, he's going to have a Guzman there for sure. Alright, we're going to... The game's yelling at us. Do we have any more energy? Okay, we're going to Flower Supply. Attach to Lorantis. And basically say you have to take out either the Lorantis or the Shining Genesect. Whichever one you don't take out, we should be able to follow up with a win on one of these two guys. Unless they bring out this top of Lele here. Then we will cry. But if they do do a Guzma, actually right now, I guess now that we stack the energy onto Lorantis, I think we do want to see a Guzma so we can keep this Guzma in hand. So obviously there's a Tapu Lele, and if they play an N, then we're going to have to hope to draw the Guzma. If there's no N, how many N are, have been played? Two. Just only two. And just energy draw. So I think we're going to make it out. Uh, so yeah, we're doing 150, and we should be able to take that guy down. So we're going to get that Trompa. All this without Venusaur, so most of the time you guys didn't really get to see Venusaur um, double all this damage, but we're still getting things done. Taking down decks, striking fear into the opponents, and uh, doing so in style. Uh, so yeah, you can see Shining Genesect attacking with a uh, non-GX attacker is just so huge. And we're doing all that without even having our double damage, basically. Um, so, I mean, I guess there could be something said for running a 3-1-3 three, three line of Venusaur. So it's something you guys can tinker with if you want. Um, let me know. Give me, like, any comments or suggestions. Um, and, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys checking out the vid. I will be back with some more deck profiles soon. So stay tuned. Take care.